Hello guys, DKGs here, for your comfortable Lozak life. In this video, I'd like to cover one of its class engraving of the artist, as the video in my channel has some old introduction and editing, so I thought it'd be great to remake it like the recent cover video. Now follow me, I'll show what it is. Before I start this video, one thing you need to know is that this video is based and made on KR region. In other words, some of the skills and build might be a little different with the preference of the global. As the update progression on KR region are quite ahead than the global, so some of the skill composition build might be a little bit different with the global. Also, as the low stock always sort of fix the balance in the future balance patches, so some of the skills can be slightly different on the future. So watch this video with those considerations and use this video as your reference to your Lost Ark journey. And for those who seek the raising the support character, we Lost Ark players always thanks for your dedication and your service. Let's start with the most basic of this video. Class engraving I'm going to cover in this video is Full Bloom, Mange in Korean. Full Bloom class engraving is a typical support class engraving which has two identity skills, Moonfall and the Sunrise. Unlike the other support class in Lost Ark, like Paladin and the Bard, support artist has more uh, interactable identity. Sunrise is an uh, example for that. Using Sunrise will emit the healing wave which heal nearby teammates. Additionally, installing healing orb which can be interacted with 60 seconds of time and can be summoned up to 3 at once. Interaction or just picking up the orb will heal 25% of the artist's max HP. Moonfall will consume 2 orbs and give you 10% attack power buff for 10 seconds. Compared to the other buff from the other support class, it is about 2 courage buff from the bard but has a 2 second less uptime. Just like the other support class in the Lost Ark, artists nowadays usually using the Swift Base specialization build for better efficiency. And I think the Swift Base build are quite commonly used on every support build. And I think mostly support build has not many variations to choose from, so Swift Base specialization is quite fixed to use. And also, some of the guys was asked about, what about the full spec? Well, actually, the specialization build is not that recommended. Mostly, the full specialization has little bad reputation on overall gameplay, party making with some bad efficiency. So most of the build that out of standard is not that actually recommended. Might have some great efficiency with the attack power buff and the healing orb, but actually, it is more like giving up everything except for that too. Like, you are giving up caring factors. So it is... might not be great for the party playing. So I suggest you to stick with the standard stat build. And of course you need to use the yearning gear set for your supporting. Engraving of the artist can be summarized like this text box. Base of the artist engraving is Awakening, Heavy Armor, Expert, and the Full Moon. Actually I think this build is quite typical build of the most of the support. With this base engraving, you can play it with stability. Some of the guys was asked about not using the heavy armor, but as usual it's not recommended due to the reason of the low HP of the artist. Death of the support is quite crucial on clearing the whole raid, so for stable survival, I suggest you to use the heavy armor. So you can upgrade your engraving step by step like this text box. Adding crisis evasion as your additional engravings will make you more stable on your survival. I think the trend of the Lost Ark raid these days is adding more patterns and mechanics that must evade or survive. So both engraving is quite preference. If you decided to add spirit absorption, you can have more convenience on your controls. But as you decided to lower the heavy armor from level 3 to level 2, so you might die more easily. So try to use it if you are confident about your artist. Also I added a final build of the artist. But as the most of the 5, 3, plus 2 engravings, you need to have a 9, 7 or 10, 6 stone for this build. So you need some little more time for finalize this build. Well actually I did a lot of comment about the engraving build, but overall personal opinion of the engraving build is that you need to choose it that fits well to your circumstances. So do it with flexibility. Also the card of the support is different with a normal character. As you might already know about the support card set, Lost Wind Cliff card set is mostly used on the most of the region rate, which the synergy with the Light of Salvation, Master of Spear card set, which has a synergy with the Kazeros region commander card set, which specially used on the Bissell Dungeon Kayangel. If you don't have this both card set, try to use the You Have a Plan card set on every raid. Both synergy card set is actually need 30 plus awakening for the full synergy, so it can be a little bit difficult for the new players too. I think the big advantage of the artist is that you don't need that many things to prepare for joining the raid. Artist has low dependency on the tribal leveling, so you can almost pick it up and play right away when you reach the certain island level. 
Also, Artist has decent utility skills, especially like Blink and Purify of the Dual of Illusion skill has a great usage during the certain gimmicks like limiting the controls. And it is only skill that has teleportations. So if you have enough veterancy with your Artist, you can almost super save your teammates. And also she has a great support function with decent identity cycle too. And I think personally, it is not picky to manage than the bar too. And I think the stagger is also great to perform on most of the situation. Active shield skill or covering skill are a little bit hard to handle because you need to actually aim toward your teammates to provide actual shields. Of course, you really don't have to worry about missing the shield skill on every single shot, but it might be a little bit pickier than the other support class shields mechanism. I think the best advantage of the artist is also existing on the requirements. And maybe just like the other support, if you met some requirements, you could go to the raid right away on every raid. I mean, even on the exact item level. Also, you really don't need that much effort for the tripod leveling. Most of the skills are already maxed on level 1, so you can go to the raid right away without preparation. Core mechanic of the artist is identity and go. Every action you take as an artist will supply your identity meters. So you need to manage your skill accurately for better identity circulations and supportings. Well, let's talk about those details on the skill composition section. Composition of the skill can be summarized like this text box. Roughly, artist skills are categorized four part as you can see on this text box. Let me explain it one by one. First, let's start with the shield skill. Commonly and mainly, artist shield skills have three skills. Starry Knights, Sprinkle, and the last, Hopper. Lord of the Sprinkle is mainly shields and additionally can perform a decent stagger with the overwhelm. One special thing of the Sprinkle is that you need to actually aim and shoot toward your teammate to provide shields. Hopper is also the main shield skill that mainly used with the Sprinkle. Hopper is not only great and decent shield skill but also the decent identity supply skill with the wealth. And the last, Starry Knight. Starry Knight is a skill that has an immune on every incoming attack but personally, I won't recommend you to use the Starry Knight on the actual gameplay. Starry Knight might be looks great with the full immune factors, but it's actually passive shield skills which needs to stay nearby your teammates. Above all, it has quite long casting time with low on identity supply. So mostly, you have to use the skill if you don't need to have a counter. Marking skill is a damage increase skill which delivering debuff toward enemy. Active marking debuff can be seen on the debuff screen which located below of the enemy HP bar or the paint marking above the enemy. Currently, the marking skill has three types, Ink Shower, Drawing Orchid, Butterfly Dream. Each marking up time is like this. I recommend and I think Drawing Orchid is commonly used by the artist players because it is easy to maintain marking and also give the movement speed buff to your teammates. Of course, the other markings or ink brand skill has a decent advantage on maintaining the marking too. Like Ink Shower has a stacking tripod, marking skills are more like a preference, so you can choose it with your preference too. But personally, I recommend you to use the Drawing Orchid for easier gameplay and skill management. Representative buff skill is Sunwell and the Sun Sketch. And just like the other buff from the other support character, both buff skills cannot be stacked. So you need to use the skill separately or more like you need to use it for continuing the buff. One special thing of the Sunwell is that you need to use the buff directly below of your teammate to grant them attack power buff. MP recovery might be applied for every teammate by just using it, but you need to use it below of your teammate for give them an attack power buff at the same time. But after the small rework, the size of the sun well got expanded than before, so you are no longer have to accurately aim for the full buff for the back and the front teammate. One and only teleportation or more like blink skill of the Lost Ark. Door of Illusion is not only the teleportation skill, but also has a great identity supply on installing it. And after that patch, installing Aura will provide shields nearby the teammates. So for the quick identity boost and shield cover is possible for nearby teammates. And of course, with the purify. Representative counter skill is upward stroke. Upward stroke is actually quite a multi-role skill of the artist. It has a counter, decent stagger, destruction, and has an immune on incoming attack. So you can use this upward stroke to perform emergency evasion. 
One empty skill can be chosen from the variation, but personally I recommend using the Pouncing Tiger for the Stagger. While actually empty skill is more like a preference, you need to switch it by the raid or the situation, like replace it with a Starry Knight for better survival, so try to choose it with your preference. And common composition of the skill set can be like this. Skill build can be summarized like this text box. Actually, I did a lot of explanation for each skill, so I'll skip the build explanation and I'll show you the gem priority after this text box. Gem priority can be summarized like this text box. Theoretically, full swift build can maintain and manage a marking or ink brand skill like all time on level 5 gem. But to do that, on the actual gameplay, you need to have more than a level 7 gem for better and stable ink brand uptime. So try to upgrade your gem and use the marking skill properly during the raid. Afflorescence is an awakening skill of the artist. Spectacle, well, I never saw the artists who are using the spectacle as a main awakening skill. The reason is quite simple. Afflorescence has a shield and immediate identity boost. Spectacle won't. So try to use this awakening skill during the raid. I think the best advantage of the artist is that it has almost no huddle for the gameplay. Unlike the bard needs some sense and understanding for each skill role of the full supporting and sometimes the identity can be wasted with nothing. Artists can use the skill without wasting the identity. Especially the healing orb can be interacted on 16 seconds for every party members is also a quite big advantage. As I said on the skill composition section, both attack power buff cannot be stacked. So you need to use it separately to maintain the attack power buff. So try to use it and consider like as continuing the buff. But one interesting thing of the artist is that Moonfall. Identity and the both buff skills can be stacked. So for more clear explanation, two buff skills cannot be stacked at the same time, but with the identity Moonfall can be stacked with the two buff. So once you use the Moonfall, you need to use the one buff skill every time for better efficiency. The reason of the stacking is that Identity is an outgoing damage of the teammates, but the Sunwell and the Sun Sketch is an attack power buff. So it has a slight differences between the two buff. So it might look same, but it's actually different. So try to keep in mind this thing too. Also, as I mentioned, Door of Illusion can give you a small boost for your identity supply by just installing it. So install it properly for cleanse the debuff of your teammate or just simply supply the identity or show some tricks on some gimmicks. Actually the skill combo of the artist is really a reference. It is more like you need to understand the role of the skill composition and use it on the proper situation. So try to remember this big frame of the artist. You have two category skills which you need to keep in mind and keep maintained during the raid. For those who seek the MVP on the right, maintaining the marking is quite crucial. And then use the identity supply skills or shield skill between every uptime of the marking buff skill. Chaos Dungeon build can be summarized like this text box. Core skill of the artist is from the Inkwell, Crane Wing, and the Hopper. These three skills are great on cleaning the massive orb, especially the Crane Wings are machine gun of the artist during the CD. You can almost shoot without the cooldown. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching everyone. And always, thanks for your big support. Hope this video was a little help for your lost art journey. Hope you do well with your artist with this video. And of course, if you like my videos, hit the sub for more upcoming infos. I'll come back with more useful infos in the next video.